Hello, good morning, after eve, or good morning, afternoon or evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. I'm feeling a bit dull today, I'm feeling a bit like a, what I call a chocolate hangover, because recently I ate some chocolate and then about, sometimes about 24 hours after that I get this hangover type experience. The next day I often get headachy, nauseous and all that kind of stuff. But I haven't drunk any alcohol, it's, I've only eaten some kind of chocolate, might be just ordinary bar of chocolate, might be chocolate cake or something like that. And then I get this hangover type thing about 24 hours later, it starts, start, kicks in. I want to put this out like a public service announcement, just, just in case other people are being affected by this and they're not aware of it because of the delay between eating the stuff and then having the, the hangover effect. So is chocolate toxic for some people? Maybe, maybe not. Let's get into it. I don't tend to eat chocolate very much, but I noticed uh, a few years ago that I was starting to get a headache around about sometime in Monday afternoon. I would get the headache, nausea, feeling dehydrated. And uh, I thought, what's causing this? Oh, maybe it's stress. Um, I had quite a lot of pressure on at work and or I couldn't figure it out what the cause was and then it finally dawned on me you know recently I started eating chocolate cake on Sunday afternoon I thought can that could that be the cause and and so the next weekend I didn't eat chocolate at all and the Monday I was fine I thought okay there's there's evidence of a possible causation between those two events so eventually I so eventually I uh, pretty much cut out chocolate and uh, not that I tended to eat much of it anyway but I, I cut it out and um, and got far fewer headaches and far fewer of these experiences I was just suddenly feeling all kind of noises and unwell and dehydrated and uh, so I just started calling this a chocolate hangover because it's very similar to the effect of alcohol ha hangover except that with, with alcohol you know you're you can be highly aware of the connection because you get it the next morning. <laughs> it's the morning after with alcohol. Whereas a chocolate hangover seems to be, it's the afternoon after, <laughs> might even be the evening after, um, because there's this delay before it kicks in. So I wanted to put this out because other people may be affected by this. They might be getting these chocolate hangovers and not even know what the cause is because of the gap between uh, the time, the, the gap of time between taking the stuff and having the experience of the chocolate hangover. Because uh, as I say, it took took a while for me to realise the cause because I didn't hadn't tended to eat chocolate very often. Now, is this an allergic reaction? You might wonder because um, the thing the thing is, it doesn't seem to me to be like an allergic reaction because it's like my body's reacting to a toxin. Now, I'm not a medical professional. I don't pretend to be giving medical advice. But just want to put out what my experience is. And because the way my body reacts to alcohol is, like most people, get a hangover. And my body reacts to the chocolate the same way. It's very much like a reaction to a toxin. And uh, as if it's processing something that, that's t toxic. And then once it's processed it, or if I drink a lot of water to help to re rehydrate myself, that helps. And once the body's processed it, it kind of get back to normal again, back to its equilibrium. It doesn't strike me as being like an allergy, though it could be. don't know. I'm not an expert on these things. Because you wouldn't call um, an alcohol hangover an alcohol allergy. So it just seemed to be more, as I say, as a, talk, a reaction to a toxin rather than an allergic reaction. Some people have said to me, well, it actually might be it's also a reaction to the amount of sugar that's in the chocolate or the combination of sugar and fat that's in the chocolate. And, um, and I thought, well, that could be the possibility. And I've noticed that if I take, um, I sometimes take a little bit of chocolate that's like 97% cocoa. And so there's virtually no sugar in it. And I seem to get on a bit better with that. But still, that's incredibly bitter chocolate, by the way. <laughs> But I don't risk taking much of that and I don't take it very often because I do believe there are some things in chocolate which are good for you um, within certain limits. But the problem is, what do we mean by chocolate? <laughs> because you see a lot of scientific research and I see lots of little snippets in 
newspapers saying, oh, the scientists have discovered that chocolate's good for you because it's got this in it, or chocolate's good for you because it's got that in it. Okay, I think, well, that's all very well, but are they cherry picking the research and only emphasizing the good bits and not saying anything about the way they're discovering that maybe chocolate has a toxic effect and a toxic reaction to the, in the body? Um, or is it that is it one of these things only a small percentage of people or people like me who react to whatever it is in chocolate? For example, as you probably know, Asians just don't process milk products very easily. I lived in Japan for a while and I even had a Japanese wife at one point. And I noticed if we go and buy a, a bar of chocolate in Tokyo, it's a tiny wee thing. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a bar of chocolate. <laughs> yeah. And so I asked my, my then wife, you know, because she didn't really eat much chocolate. I said, do you and your family, do you not much into it? You know, we're, as you know, we're big in chocolate in the West. Do you not bother much with it in Japan? Oh, yeah, yeah, we buy it. And I says, well, I thought, look, these bars are very, very small, you know, for us in the West, you know, because she'd been to the West and she kind of knew that. She said, oh, yeah. She says, well, my mum might buy one of these and it'll last her maybe more than a week, she might only take one square, there's a tiny wee square of this tiny wee bar a day, of, 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 even of that, of that, and oh, okay, because, you know, and that might be because they can't, uh, they don't process milk very well in, the, in Asia, it's uh, something to do with, to do with the DNA, so they probably have less of a problem of, chai, of chocolate hangovers in Japan, so, so it may be that there's something, so different people have different ways of processing different foodstuffs and different things we ingest, so it could be something in my DNA and in my family's DNA because I've asked other members of my family and they have a similar reaction to chocolate and uh, uh, chocolate type products. And, um, and years ago I put up a, a, a post on a website uh, talking about the chocolate hangover and I got responses from people saying, wow, well, yeah, yeah, I get that, thanks for mentioning it. And so I wanted to put this out there. And uh, so one of the issues is coming back to the research thing. So there's always thing about this research that proves this or that about chocolate. But they don't defi they don't usually define, or certainly not in these snippets that appear in newspaper, what they are testing. <laughs> are they testing the chocolate that is most very little cocoa and mostly milk, fat and sugar that is in a lot of the supermarkets? Or is it some kind of pure form of chocolate they're using specifically for the research that doesn't have all of the added stuff to it? So that's not clarified. So it may be taking cocoa um, in a small quantity may have a good effects in the body in some ways for some people and may be the majority of people. But um, so in research, they might be using something far purer without a lot of the added things like milk, fat and sugar and all sorts of other things. They're doing research on something that's relatively pure. And then we go to the supermarket and we get this stuff that's very little of the active ingredients, perhaps. It's not clear about what this, when they quote this research of chocolate's good for you because this, they're not s s defining chocolate. <laughs> they're not saying what they're actually testing because they may be testing something very different from what you get in your local supermarket <laughs> or what you get in your local shop, you know. There could be a big difference there. So they're being a bit disingenuous, uh, <laughs> I think, with some of this way they're quoting research about chocolate. Anyway, I wanted to share this just because some poor soul out there might be getting these dull, heady things, or maybe even much worse, maybe even be triggering migraines or something in people. But because it's happening delayed, because it's maybe 24 hours or more later after they've taken the chocolate, they might not know that that's the trigger. I mean, I have heard that chocolate can be a trigger for migraine. Anyway, please comment put in your experiences. I'm not, not a medical expert, but I'm curious to know if other people have had this reaction who find them they eat chocolate and then there's some kind of delay and they get some kind of headache, sickness, hangover symptoms or, or where you don't get that, where you can eat globs of the stuff and it doesn't bother you. Or where you find that specific types of chocolate are okay for you. Add your thing. What's your experience with chocolate? Is it do you the world of good and never causes you any harm, not even 24 hours later, or can you not handle this stuff at all? So please uh, make your comment so we can see what is the, the general consensus of people. Do you get a chocolate hangover or not? Let, let other people know in the comments and do a little bit of investigative research here. Okay. <laughs> all right. Take care. Hope you got something out of this. Uh, be you. Be your best. Be your best self.
You're awesome. Go for it.